Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins. I'm so glad you're here with me in the studio today. I'm going to provide a tutorial on painting the night. This happens to be the monthly theme in our Facebook group, Monet Cafe Art Group, Painting the Night, also called a Nocturne Painting. Now, I will be featuring a set of Sennelier pastels that I love. This is a little 40-piece half-stick set. It's a great set, and I love the assortment of values and colors. I'm going to be talking about that in this video, and it's a great starter set. It's less than $60 for 40 pastels. That's really not too bad. And because you get the half sticks, you get more that way. Now, I will also be adding a few more pastels, not many, and really those aren't even needed. You could use this one set to create this painting. Uh, again, I'll talk about that. And since I'm using the Sennelier Soft Pastels, I thought I'd use the Sennelier Pastel Card. It's a product, it's kind of a long name for this pastel paper, Sennelier Le Carte Pastel Pastel Card. It's thicker, that's why it's called card. And I'm going to be talking about this surface as I work too. I love this surface. Now here's my setup on my tabletop easel. I have my Sennelier Pastel Card up and ready to go. I've got my iPad. A lot of people ask about that little holder I have. It's uh, something I got from Ikea, only about $15, I think. And I have a little preliminary sketch that I did. You can see there at the lower right. Now, this reference image I got from pmp-art.com. I can't share it here. This is small enough where it doesn't uh, conflict with their rules. But I will be sharing the image, the link to the image, on my Patreon page. If you'd like to become a patron, it's only $5 a month, and you can do so at that link above and a clickable link at the end of this video. All right, let's get started. But first, I took a couple of pics of my little art sidekick who's often just hanging out with me. What a loyal companion, my Jackson. <laughs> He's so awesome. Now for this initial sketch, I'm just using an index card and these Tombow, T-O-M-B-O-W, dual brush markers. I love these markers. They're great for doing a quick little value study. And if you don't know what a value study is, I have quite a few videos where I go through and create them and talk about the advantages of doing them. Um, so that's not really the point of this video, but I thought I'd go ahead and speed this up and let you see me creating this. I'm basically just getting in the general composition. Uh, the great thing about this is it works out any issues before you commit to the pastels. Again, I'm speeding this up. Uh, you're gonna see this whole thing recreated when I do the painting. But again, I'm stressing the value of doing a value study. Um, it's really a good idea. I don't always do them, but I find that my paintings are usually stronger when I do. Now, if you thought that one was fast, I'm really speeding this one up because, again, it gets redundant after a while. I decided to add pastels to this. And again, yes, this is just index card, and it's not a sanded surface that you would usually work on. But I thought, you know what, let me go ahead and just add some pastels and kind of get my color composition idea um, going before I commit to the painting. All right, so now we can get started. Here I'm recreating the sketch again, and uh, on the Sennelier Pastel Le Carte card, I am just using a little pastel pencil, and again, just giving myself some uh, a roadmap, some guidance as to where things will be. You don't need a whole lot with this. And this is a broken um, Terry Ludwig Dark. It may be the eggplant color that it seems like everybody loves so much. Sometimes the camera's in my way when I'm filming. I have to work with my right hand even though I'm left-handed. But that's another video I'm going to do actually is where I stress for you guys um, to practice painting with your non-dominant hand. It's really a, a neat exercise. So again, I'm just really kind of loosely... Um, uh, getting the marks down to represent the trees. I'm working on shapes rather than them having individual branches and leaves. They're far away anyway, so they're not going to have a lot of detail. And uh, typically because we sort of negative paint when we're painting our skies in anyway, when we make the sky holes, we our trees kind of look a little bit like a blob to begin with. <laughs> but that's okay. Again, when things are far away and it, it kind of lends towards that impressionistic style. Now, you'll notice here that what I'm doing, oh, I wanted to mention too, even though the dark pastels that I showed um, are not in the set with the Sennelier, the 40 half stick sets, you really could do this whole painting with just that one set because that set has a black. I'm not sure if it's pure black, but it's it's a really dark color. I just usually don't prefer black, but you could absolutely use the black pastel in the Sennelier Le Carte set 
uh, to do what I'm doing here. And what I'm doing here is really, it's like another value study. Uh, and I'm varying the darkness by varying the pressure. Now, see, like right here in the water, I'm glazing over the surface. I'm not pressing super hard, so it's not as dark. So you can do a value study with a pastel uh, just based on your, your pressure, you know. So um, I also wanted to mention this Le Carte. I marked my paper off. I had this piece of paper anyway to be a six by eight. That's a piece of pipe foam insulation there. And what I'm doing, I'll get back to my other point in a minute, is I am uh, blending with this. It works great for pulling the shadows down. With reflections, you basically just want to create a mirror image in the water and then use that pastel, I mean that um, pipe foam insulation to drag it down. You see how pulling the trees down and then glazing over uh, horizontally really gives that in of water. Now here's another pastel that I'm using that's not in the set, but there is one in the set that you could use in place of this. It's a, I'll point it out to you later. It's a, it's the next darkest dark after the black. And before I was talking about this actual pastel surface, the pastel card, but um, I'm going to talk about that in a minute because I want to show you right now my system of how I use this little container uh, of the set to keep track of which pastels I've used. You didn't see me do it here, but in a minute you'll see I literally just turn the pastels upright uh, of the ones I'm using. So at the end, you'll be able to see all the pastels that I actually used out of this set for this particular painting. Now I love this blue. Oh my gosh, it's just a gorgeous blue. Obviously the reference photo is a lot of blue and a lot of those rich, deep blues. I also was seeing purple in there and towards the end I actually add a little bit of a magenta color to it. But this particular set, the Sennelier Half Stick set, has some gorgeous blues in it and uh, actually a really great variety of colors. I find it's a good set um, in general to create, you know, multiple types of landscape scenery. Uh, the only thing it was lacking in a little bit, um, basically, is is some good purples. It didn't have, um, th that's why I'm using that <laughs> Terry Ludwig purple right there. I needed kind of a darker, uh, duller purple for the um, foreground area of that water. And uh, again, just kind of glazing over the water a little bit. When you use those horizontal strokes with glazing, it really does flatten the water out a lot. Now, um, what you see in the water, what you see in the sky will be reflected in the water, so I knew I needed to add some of that purple up a bit higher in the sky. And, okay, now I am going to talk about this paper a little bit. The Sennelier Le Carte paper is very coarse. One of the more coarser papers that I have worked on other than when I make a surface myself. There you can see how I turn the pastels up. Now that's the next blue. Um, it's a little bit brighter and a little a little lighter in value. Um, but I, I love turning those pastels up like that. So you can just go, oh yeah, these are the ones I've already used. Um, but again, the Sennelier Pastel Le Carte card is very coarse. And a uh, word of not really caution, but just advice, I guess, is when I first started working with it, I was like, oh my gosh, you can't even cover it up. You've just got to press really hard to, you know, get the pastel and all those little uh, grooves because it's so gritty. But actually, don't, don't even think about that. Just keep working because what happens is the pastel, as you work, gradually, as you add layers, it does um, cover up that. Now, you can pick or choose whether you want to do that or not. Sometimes I like letting a little bit of the paper show through. And those pads that I showed at the beginning, they come in various colors. This is just kind of a, almost like a little beigey, yellowy beige color. All right, the next one, that's the next lightest in value, is this lighter blue. Now I did do a little bit of, a, of it down at the kind of the horizon line where it the sky met those mountains in the back. And I just um, kind of gradually added it going up. And I, you know, I work on the sky, adding a few more colors. Sky colors are always more interesting if you kind of do some fractured um, layering of different uh, values uh, and even different colors. Now, you see how glazing that on top of the water? Again, because I put it in the sky, I'm going to put it in the water. Now, this is the purple that is, I also want to point out, you see that how they, the Sennelier pastels have like a little, almost like a little tail on them or a little foot. <laughs> and uh, I, I wish they would make them to where they were smoother. I like the fact that they're round, but you always kind of have to almost scrub the pastel to get it to lay flat 
Uh, you might see me do that in a minute with some of these. Um, adding a little more purple back in there. I thought the mountains were just a little too dark. They needed to be lightened in value. They were also a little bit too low, uh, so I raised them up. Now, now they're probably too light again. Yeah, so I'm adding more dark. Um, but anyway, so those um, um, Sennelier pastels, I, I do wish they were smoother, but that's okay. Can't complain because I do love them. Other than that, they're awesome. All right, I'm gonna work a little bit more, add some music. You guys relax, enjoy. I hope you uh, learn from this and I hope you'll try it. If you do and you're in our Patreon group, please share it on our Patreon page, uh, my, my Facebook group for my patrons. All right, enjoy this process.
right, now it's time to add that moon and the reflection in the water. I drew the moon in first just to remember where it was, but I knew if I covered the sky up, which I did, that I could just put it right back in. Uh, of course, we can layer with sanded surfaces and you really get a lot of layers with this Sennelier. Uh, I mean, it's it's really nice to work with. That was a warmer yellow I first put down. It was a little darker in value. This one is a cooler yellow. I wanted, you know, sometimes the moon has that warm glow to it, not just that almost uh, pale white um, yellowy glow to it. So I wanted to uh, get the warmth down first and then get the lighter, cooler yellow. Now, I wanna add even more warmth. So what I'm doing is I'm using this darker orange. It might sa seem, um, I'm so sorry for my head being in the way. It was kind of the only way I could see it <laughs> to get my face close enough to it. But I wanted to get um, that feeling of warmth. The whole scene is so blue that it really did need um, a little bit more warmth to it than just a flat white moon. All right, so I'm getting down that um, that orange. Notice I didn't draw a circle. Um, I didn't make a, a circular line and fill it in. I'm just um, using the pastel to make a circular shape. But now what I'm doing is I'm lightly going around the moon. The moon's gonna be smaller than what you see here because I want a little halo or a little glow around it. So I add that extra circumference to the moon, and then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of that sky blue. Again, I totally apologize, you can't see a lot that I'm doing here. And I just gradually with the sky blue layer over it, I don't wanna cover up the whole part of the yellow, but I obviously don't want it glowing that dramatically. Now you can see, I'm just kind of lightly putting that blue on top, not covering it all up. And now, let me see if I can zoom in a little more and you can see the glow to this moon. All right, the resolution isn't great here, but you get the idea that there is a, a little halo kind of around it. My camera keeps focusing on my head when I get it in the way. So that created that little glow. You just go a little bit of outside of the moon and then just gradually put a little sky color on top of it. All right, now I think this is where I wanted to add a little bit of that magenta color. See how I'm sticking the pastels up upright like that? It makes a neat way that you don't have to take them out and then you might forget where they go. I mean, or take the time to figure out where they go. It's not that hard really. But um, I wanted to add a little bit more of that warmer palette, warmer color palette to this. So I decided to put a little bit of that on the mountains. And um, actually, it makes sense because if the moon has um, light to it and a warmth to it like it does, uh, then you could add a little bit of that warmth to those mountains for the reflection uh, that it's kind of receiving from the light. Now this is that darker magenta Terry Ludwig that I, I showed at the beginning of this video. And I just, the water in the foreground was so dark, I didn't want to use that one that was lighter than I used on the mountains, the more of a paler magenta color. All right, so I'm going to just work along here until I get to the reflection in the water, which to me, that was the icing on the cake in this painting. Those little uh, sparkly uh, bits of reflection kind of dancing over the water. All right, I'll be getting to that soon.
I zoomed in again to be able to see what I'm doing with this reflection, I pointed to that darker, um, really rich kind of yellow, uh, warm yellow, orangey yellow. And uh, I am just kind of dancing the pastel around uh, really kind of what I see. There's little um, random strokes back and forth, almost zigzaggy. And again, I'm putting, just like I did with the moon, I'm putting the darker value down first, and then I will add the lighter value. Now I noticed in the reference photo, there was uh, a lot of reflection coming forward, but then there was a, a span where there was no reflection and then a little bit way further back. So, and those marks were really small because it, you know, because of perspective in the distance. reflection I knew I was pretty much done I add a few more energetic strokes to the water and I was thankful to have this time to paint oh yes this is that um, really dull green it, it's hard to see from just the video screen that's why I uh, zoomed in closer uh, because it adds a little bit more of that feel that these are evergreen trees with um, with their foliage you kind of just do a little bit of a, a zigzaggy pattern to give that impression of evergreens. So this was fun and it was very therapeutic because this painting was done right in the midst of getting all of the news about the coronavirus, um, you know, closings of everything and uh, just some of the, the drama that's going on. I never fear. I know where I'm going. <laughs> of course, we have to prepare and plan, but isn't it great that we can have art to kind of get us through these times and to take our minds off of things. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I was wearing the Monet Cafe Designer Artist Series bracelet in this video. So if you would like one, I have the link in the about section of this video. You can also find it by going to www.susanjenkinsfineart.com. And if you'd like to become a patron, there's a clickable link at the end of this video. Thanks so much guys and happy painting.